everyone and welcome to Summer Steam Week 1 Day 2. Today we're going to be building our own anemometer. I'll repeat that word again. Anemometer. For this activity you will need two pieces of cardboard that we are cut out for you, four plastic cups, one push pin, one marker, one pencil, one ruler, some tape, and a strip of modeling clay. First, you're going to take your two pieces of cardboard and with your ruler and marker, you're going to go ahead and try to find the middle of that piece of cardboard. It should measure 17 inches by 3 inches, so half of 17 is 8.5, so find 8.5 on one end and measure that. That should be the middle lengthwise. So then half of 3 inches is 1.5 inches, so where you made that mark of 8.5 inches lengthwise, go ahead and find 1.5 inches widthwise. Is that word widthwise? Using your ruler, connect the lines you drew to make a cross right in the middle. You can also not make a cross, you can just make intersecting lines if that's what you prefer. Go ahead and do that on your second piece of cardboard. 8.5 inches lengthwise and 1.5 inches widthwise. Make a next, make a cross, make an intersecting line. Because now you know the middle of those pieces of cardboard. Now that you know the middle, use your push pin to poke a hole right where those two lines intersect. We're going to go ahead and get our four plastic cups and you're going to mark one plastic cup as your special cup. So draw a plus sign, a heart, a square, whatever you need to know that that's your special cup. And you're going to tape your cups to the end of your cardboard. So go ahead and tape one cup whichever direction, but make sure that the next cup that you tape will face the opposite direction. That way they'll be going in the same direction when the cardboard spins. Go ahead and tape two more cups to the other piece of cardboard, but make sure that they face the same way as the two cups on your first piece of cardboard. So see how on the top end, I have one cup facing left, and I'm gonna have one cup facing right. That way, they all are technically facing the same direction. Next, you're just gonna take your strip of modeling clay and you're gonna mush it into a round, flat shape. Doesn't matter if it's a ball, doesn't matter if it's square, just as long as it is a clump. You're gonna take your two pieces of cardboard that have the cups taped at the end and you're gonna push the push button through the middle on both of those pieces of cardboard so they're connected. Then you're gonna take your pencil, you're gonna stab that push pin through the eraser. Or you can push it gently, don't stab it. Now that you have the cardboard connected to the pencil, you're gonna go ahead and stick your pencil into that lump of modeling clay. And your modeling clay is gonna hold up your anemometer. And an anemometer, an anemometer. And now, it can spin. Your anometer can spin. It should look something like this. Most people do not know that wind is caused by the uneven heating of the atmosphere. Air is heated up by the sun which causes it to rise. This produces an area of low pressure. Cooler air produces an area of high pressure and moves in under the warm air. This pattern of air movement creates wind. 
Wind speed is usually measured using a cup anemometer, which typically has three cups that catch the wind. The number of times that the cups spin in a full circle per minute is counted electronically. This type of anemometer is commonly seen on weather stations and is used for meteorological observations. Modern wind turbines have special generators that convert mechanical energy, which is energy for movement, into electricity. Wind turbines turn the kinetic energy, the energy of motion, of wind into mechanical or electrical power. The amount of power produced by wind generator depends on elevation, wind speed, and air temperature. Wind turbines are best located in areas where wind speeds are 16 to 20 miles per hour and the rotor is placed 50 meters high.